Hello and welcome to this session on Compound Interest and AER with me, Mr McIver, at the London Central and Northwest Maths Hub at Marylebone School. To make sense of this session, you will have to have watched the previous one on percentages using multipliers. So if you haven't seen that, stop watching this one now and go back and look at it. It looked at the idea of depositing money in a bank at, say, 3% a year. How do you work out how much you've got in one step? Well, you simply turn your interest rate, 3% a year, into a multiplier, 1.03% per year and multiply 4,000 by that number three times. So the calculation is simply 4,000 pounds times 1.03 cubed. And that's the amount you have in the bank after three years. If you don't follow that, you need to watch that video in multipliers. Let's move on. What is AER? It's certainly something that gets referred to an awful lot by banks and building societies. Here's an advert I pulled off the web very recently. The Bank of Scotland on their Vantage account. Here's another one. The Nationwide Building Society. It's offering 5% AER, but there's another figure there too, 4.89% gross. The question we're going to answer today is, why are these numbers different? Why can't the banks make up their mind about which rate they are paying? Let's have a closer look at the first of these examples and find out what's going on. Here is the Bank of Scotland Vantage account. Their top AER is 3% paid on balances of three to five thousand pounds. So let's look at our four thousand pound deposit that we used in that example at the start. And let's suppose that they're paying 2.96% per annum. After all, that's what they call the gross rate, so that must be something to do with it. If we go through the normal calculation, you're going to have to use this multiplier of 1.0296. So after one year, you've got that much. And after two years, you've got that much. And after three years, you've got that much. OK, that's using the gross rate. What about this AER? Let's do the sum again. Once again, we're putting £4,000 in the bank, but this time the interest rate is slightly higher. So our multiplier is 1.03. After one year, we've got that, a little bit more than under the previous regime. After two years, that. And after three years, that. These two figures are different. It's the one on the right that you actually get paid. So what's it got to do with the one on the left? Why do they even bother telling you about this 2.96% rate if that's not what they're paying you? Here's the key idea. Over here, on this gross calculation side, I used a multiplier of 1.0296 per annum. But 2.96% gross does not mean the bank pays you 2.96% once a year. Banks pay interest more than once a year. This multiplier is wrong. So that figure is wrong, that figure is wrong, that figure is wrong. It's all wrong down the left-hand side. The right-hand side is the calculation the bank do. Kind of. The calculation the bank does ends up acting like it was the one on the right, but it's not the precise sum they do. Let's look at what's going on. If I take this figure of 2.96% and do this thing called annualise it monthly. I mean, the bank don't just pay you 2.96% once a year. What they do is they take this gross rate and... To work out what you've got after three years, chop it up into a monthly rate. So they're not really paying you 2.96% a year. They're paying you 0.24666666% every month. And this is the key idea. Your multiplier isn't used annually. It's used monthly. Your multiplier is this funny number here per month. 0.24666666666. 
So to find out what you have at the end of one year, you actually have to take your monthly multiplier and raise it to the power 12. For two years, you take your monthly multiplier, raise it to the power 12, and then raise it to the power 2. For three years, your monthly multiplier to the power 12 and then to the power 3. And if we put that alongside the multiplier of 1.03 a year, the figures match almost exactly. The AER tells you the effective interest rate you would be paid if the bank was paying its interest every year and just once a year. What the bank actually do, which is better from most people's point of view, is they pay the interest monthly. So even if you take a bit out during the year, you still get the interest for the months it's been there. This multiplier up here, 1.00246 recurring, when I raise it to the power of 12, comes out as, oh look, 1.03000. To an incredibly high degree of accuracy, you end up with an effective interest rate of 3% a year. That's where this AER comes in. AER is the annual equivalent rate. And in this particular case, a gross rate of 2.96% ends up as being equivalent to an annual rate of 3% if you were just being paid once a year. AER takes compounding into account. Banks pay their interest several times a year and working out the effective rate, the annual equivalent rate, is called annualization. It's a fiddly calculation, but it's not especially difficult. So let's do it with the nationwide figures. So here we are, 5% AER corresponds to 4.89% gross. This is what you're getting on balances of up to £2,500. I want to know what the annualisation period is. These two numbers are not the same. The bank are clearly paying this interest rate more than once a year. So what I need to do first is I need to turn my 4.96% interest rate into a multiplier, 1.0496 and ask, how on earth does this turn into 1.05% a year to find what it would be if I was paid the interest quarterly? I get my quarterly multiplier by doing 1 plus my 4.96% as a decimal divided by 4. So that's my quarterly multiplier. And then to get the AER multiplier, I take this number over here and raise it to the power of 4. 1.05053. Near enough, 5%. So there you are. They may just be annualising it quarterly. The fact is, when interest rates are this low, it doesn't make so much difference whether you annualise monthly, weekly or quarterly. But let's just go through the different calculations to show you how to do them. Quarterly payments aren't so common, although banks do sometimes use them. They more often use monthly and most often of all use daily interest rate calculations. So to get the monthly multiplier, we simply take the annual interest rate as a decimal once again, divide it by 12, add it to 1, we get 1.00413 recurring. We then raise it to the power of 12, that's the number of months in a year, and we get, oh, 1.05074. So once again, an AER of just over 5%. And to work out the daily rate, you're unlikely to be asked to do this in an exam, but it's not especially difficult. We do the 0 0.0496 divided by 365, divided by the number of days in a year. We get that number there as the daily multiplier. Raise it to the power of 365 to get the annual multiplier. And, oh look, once again, it's almost exactly 5%. This is simply an application of a formula which is written on the formula sheet you'll get in your exam. It's called the AER formula. And I'm just going to talk it through so that you don't get panicked when you see it. To work out every one of these AERs, I have done 1 plus I, the interest rate, as a decimal. This whole thing works in decimals, remember multipliers. Divided by N, the number of payments. So in the case of the quarterly payments, 
I divide through by 4. I get a number, 1.0124. That's my quarterly multiplier. And then to get the equivalent annual multiplier, I have to raise it to a power corresponding to the number of bits I've chopped my year into. Well, I've chopped it into quarters, so in this case it's 4. Here it's n. I get an answer, which is 1.0 something. But if I just want the equivalent interest rate, that's the extra money I'm getting, I have to take away 1 from the answer. If I take away 1 from 1.05, I get 0 0.05053. I get R, my annual equivalent rate. I suggest you leave these calculations showing on the screen and try doing a few questions now, figuring out what AERs are under different situations, different annualization periods, and different interest rates.